Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel and here we are covering all about microservices and we are talking about videos related to serverless framework and how we can use Nest.js to build our serverless framework with the CDK. So in the last video we were able to deploy Nest.js application as a Lambda and in the further videos we are going to play a lot with the serverless framework, um, serverless architecture components and Nest.js app where Nest.js will be acting as a Lambda, independent Lambda, dealing with the S3 buckets, SNS, SQS, Event Bridge, API Gateway and all. So in this video, we wanted to understand uh, what is the primary role. Like we are talking about uh, that we can build the whole microservice architecture with the serverless architecture, right? Uh, earlier, you might be having your microservices deployed to Kubernetes and let's say you wanted to migrate or you wanted to use serverless framework so in that case because serverless has these specific components api gateway lambda dynamo db s3 sns sqs event bridge so how you can leverage how you can transform your architecture into that so our uh, our main agenda will be behind that only let's say in this example we had a couple of we are having couple of services so every service is accessing dynamo db and these lambdas are being invoked through api gateway Either you can have a individual API gateway for the lambdas. These lambdas are uh, acting as a microservice, product microservice, basket microservice, ordering microservice. Either you can have a different API gateway pointing to these different lambdas, or you can have a proxy mapping from this API gateway only. Okay, all the product calls will go to the product lambda Nest.js microservice. All the basket API calls will go to the basket Nest.js microservice. All the order related path based uh, calls will go to ordering microservice. So in this, this is the, the end goal we are building. We are building microservices and we are using uh, API Gateway, Lambda, DynamoDB, uh, all these components. So this particular stack looks simple. Here what we are using, Lambda, API Gateway and DynamoDB. So this architecture looks very simple. We have just API gateway, API gateway will send a request. It's like a request response. Everything is synchronous, right? Lambda will do the read write to the DynamoDB, a very plain and simple architecture. But when we talk about microservices, all the architectures are not that simple. They are doing lots of asynchronous things, lots of events, triggers, uh, cron jobs, back, uh, background processing, all those things keeps happening. So how we can fit all those things with our uh, serverless architecture components. So that is the thing which we are going to discuss. So in serverless, these are the ways, I mean, these are the, like different categories. APIs are represented by API gateway, data layer, like how you are storing your data, RDS, or you can use DynamoDB, Aurora, uh, same as RDS, and AWS S3 for uh, object based store. When, whenever there is an integration of uh, microservices, either synchronous and asynchronous, like for particularly for asynchronous communication, where you want to have an event driven architecture, where you send an event to a one service and that service will, like you send a request, HTTP request, okay, create order. So Lambda will handle it. Now Lambda will send an event to either event bridge, SNS, SQS. There will be a listener Lambda, which will act on to that, but these both the lambdas the listener lambda and a subscriber lambda uh, i mean the event generator lambda which is like creating the event and the another lambda is a listener subscriber lambda both are unaware of each other they are like totally decoupled architecture i mean this is how we achieve the event driven architecture where we are emitting the events and there are listener services or listener lambdas listening to that and this is how so integration layer business logic layer where we are actually executing the code either lambda or step function and this is really important because uh, the invocation part we have divided into three different sections so you might uh, remember that this is how we are invoking our lambda we just hit a request to the api gateway and it's always request and reply We are sure that we are going to get response back from the Lambda because this is how it is designed, request and response. But these are divided into three different categories. All the serverless uh, event triggers are divided into three different categories. Because why I always use event trigger? Because 
lambda is just a function lambda will invoke itself when there is an event coming to it and that event may come from the api gateway from cloudwatch from the s3 sns sqs from any aws service right so that event is nothing but a json payload okay api gateway is saying okay user is requesting you the api v1 user endpoint and this is the payload so that is the event for lambda lambda will see okay i have a nest js microservice and router i will see what needs to be done and it will send a response back so first is a request and reply so all those things you can lambda can receive a request from api gateway alb can directly hit uh, lambda CloudFront, Cognito, S3, Bucket. So this is a synchronous inv invocation where we are sending a request directly to the Lambda. Like API Gateway, HTTP GET request going to the Lambda and Lambda will reply back. It's a, like a request and response. And this particular picture is from a, uh, uh, Awesome Cloud. I got it from Medium, owned by Asis Patil. Now, the second type of integrations we have is with the asynchronous invocations happening so how are these things happening uh, it can be something like this okay you got a request okay and you are able to reply back to the api gateway but you also need to do the some background processing like you want to generate some event so you can write some events to the sqs you can write some event to event bridge you can write event to uh, SNS SQS or all these integration platform. So what will happen is there is already uh, when you write in this way there will be a listener service. You can attach a lambda who is going to listen whenever there is a new event in the SQS when there is a new uh, event is coming from the event bridge or SNS SQS event bridge all these platforms. So lambda can listen asynchronously to these platforms. What happens is Lambda is being invoked when the request is coming to the API gateway. So that's a, a synchronous event, but the asynchronous execution happening with, through these integration platform, event bridge, SNS, SQS. So whenever there is a message on the SNS topic, the Lambda should be able to read that and uh, get that. And then you can also have a retry mechanism. Okay, I will try three times because it's a fire and forget. I'm not going to notify the sender back, okay, what is the status? So let's say I got the request from uh, API Gateway. This Lambda has created an order and it needs to do some processing after creating order, let's say sending emails and all. So Lambda will asynchronously send the event to the SQS and then there is another Lambda listening to that. So whatever the code execution it is doing, this can be totally asynchronous, right? It will maybe retry until unless it is successful. Maximum retries are three and then it will die. It won't notify this Lambda. Okay, I failed executing your stuff, right? That is asynchronous execution and it is totally decoupled. This may be a one nest JS microservice and this can be another nest JS Lambda listening to that those particular events. So these are divided into these categories. A Lambda can be triggered through the event bridge events when the event bridge receives an event sns receives an event or s3 uh, we configured one event like okay whenever uh, we create a new object on the s3 bucket this lambda will get triggered so lambda is nothing but a trigger it can be triggered synchronously asynchronously or through pole based invocation like through streams there is a change in the dynamo db stream get put update happens on the dynamo db table and I wanted to read it through the Lambda or want to do some processing. So that is all based and SQS is also a part of that. SQS, we can just uh, consider that in falling in both the category, uh, asynchronous and full based. I mean, both are asynchronous. These are just like two different categories we have created. Uh, so like SNS event bridge. So Lambda will get invoked automatically. I mean, there is no API gateway coming. Lambda will get invoked automatically whenever, but Lambda has to attach itself. Lambda, we need to specify, okay, this Lambda will be listening to the S3 events. This Lambda will be listening to the SNS events. So whenever there is SNS new event available in the SNS topic, Lambda will get triggered. We need to subscribe to these events, S3 events, SNS events or event bridge events. So automatically Lambda will get automatically triggered. So that is uh, another integration platform 
and microservices needs it very much. So we use these SNS SQS event bridge for building the event driven microservice architecture. And we can do lots of things. There can be a, a cron schedule happening and Lambda is getting executed based on the cron. Lambda is reading and writing to the DynamoDB and again dispatching the asynchronous jobs. So everything is possible through these uh, fixed set of components which we are doing. And the target of my discussion is only all about this. We should be able to use this Nest CS service, this Nest CS service. I mean, currently this is a microservice Lambda. This Lambda, which is built in Nest CS, is exposing REST interface. But there can be a Lambda which is just a function and listening to the SNS events, right? This Lambda might be sitting here and you are submitting some events when, I mean, user is interacting with your Lambda through API gateway and uh, some request or uh, okay, create account, create profile, and then I will send an event to SNS. And then there will be a listener Lambda, which is subscribing to all these events and reading it there. So here, this Lambda will get invoked and Lambda is nothing but uh, uh, just a uh, function which might be reading, writing to DynamoDB, RDS, and all those things will be happening here. So same thing can happen through SQS, can happen through the event bridge, and Lambda doesn't need to always associate itself with the API gateway. API gateway when we need to expose the REST interface through Lambda. But Lambda can exist independently, which can do some background jobs when S3 gets a new object, delete you update an object, you delete an object, you create a new object in the S3 bucket. So Lambda has its independent existence. It doesn't need to uh, always associate with the API gateway to expose REST interface. They can exist independently and they can do lots of things like, okay, cron schedule. You are running a Lambda every day at 11, which is checking some data and sending email to your clients, right? So here you don't have any API gateway or any exposed interface, but it's, uh, it's part of your whole product where you have these event driven mechanism and event driven services. So that's it. So in the next video, what we are going to talk about is we will we will talk about these use cases with the help of Nest CS microservices uh, dealing with all these uh, integration components of AWS.